Hey everybody, this is Liz with Inspiration Studio at Home and we are today going to talk about the fiery furnace and make a really cool paint pouring project that uh, kind of looks like flames. So this one is going to be a lot of fun for your kids but potentially messy. So this is one where you probably want to make sure everyone's wearing clothes that you don't mind if they get a little paint on. If it's a nice day, take this outside if you can. Um, and we'll just get into it. I'm gonna kind of give you an idea of what you need to do here. So in your kit, you have these condiment cups filled with paint. This paint has been uh, mixed together for you so that it'll flow easily so that you can pour and get a lot of really cool effects with the paint. It, because it's mixed up, you might need to kind of shake it a little. If you look at your paint, I'm looking at my red one here and it's separated a little. Keep the lid on, make sure your finger's on the lid just to make sure nothing goes splattering. And just give it a little shake, a little gentle shake to make sure that all the paint gets combined before you start. So you should have five colors. You have a red, two oranges, a yellow, and a black. Give all five of those a little shake. And then you should also find a surface to work on that can be easily moved. So I used a piece of kind of scrap wood that we had at our house. You could use a piece of cardboard, um, a cardboard box, a baking sheet, like a, a metal kind of cookie sheet would work. Just something that you can later, once this is done, you can easily pick up and move to another location because this project takes a little while to dry. When we made our sample, it took about 48 hours for this to dry, and my guess is that you know you probably don't want to leave this wet in any one given place. If you have your kids do this outside, you might want to pick it up and move it into the garage so it can dry, or move it into your basement, or um, you know just into a place where it's out of the way and you won't have a cat walk across it or bugs land in it or anything like that. So I'm going to put my piece of black plastic on my piece of scrap wood, or if you decide to use a cardboard box or a cookie sheet whatever you have handy. I also want to have some paper towels here in case I need to wipe anything up, wipe my hands off. And the first color I'm going to use is black. So I've given this black a little shake. I'm going to take the lid off and I'll put the lid on my paper towels so that I don't accidentally get paint everywhere. So I'm going to take the black and pour it over the surface of this black plastic. And it's better to start with a little and add more if you need to but I'm just kind of going back and forth, pouring this paint right onto the black. And you might be thinking, why are we doing black on top of black? And that's because you'll see when we pour the other colors on, that black will mix up with the yellow and the orange and the red, and it will make these kind of interesting, they're called cells. These little areas where the paint kind of separates and makes these kind of bubbles, and it, it gives you this kind of neat marbleized effect, which when you'll see it in person can look a lot like flames. And as your kids are doing this, you can talk with them about the story that they've been reading and talk about that fiery furnace and um, you know, get some of that kind of flame visual here. So I have the black poured onto my plastic. And then I'm going to take, you have straws in your kit. I'm going to take one of these straws and take the side of the straw and use that to kind of cover my black plastic so that there's a surface of wet black paint that goes kind of over everything. And even though I'm being careful, I already have some paint on my fingers. So again, that's why it's nice to have that paper towel there so that nothing gets too messy. And this is definitely a project that you'll want to help little ones with if you have, I would imagine anyone much younger than six would probably struggle to not completely make a huge mess of this. So I apologize in advance if this feels too messy for you. It's good to get your hands dirty. This is acrylic paint though, and so it will stain your clothes. It will stain if you get it onto anything, fabric or um, hard surfaces like your table. That'll, that'll stay on there and not come off. So that's again why it's important to make sure that you're working on top of a surface where it can get some of the paint on there. So now that I have this black plastic is coated in the black paint. Now I'm going to start pouring my colors. I'm going to pour the paint just kind of along the bottom edge and blow the flames up toward the top. 
So I'm going to do a couple lines of the red. We'll do some orange, dark orange. I'm doing just a couple lines of each color along the bottom edge of my painting. So once you've poured your paint on here, then the next step is to use a straw. And the straw is going to allow you to kind of blow this paint around and you'll see this really pretty separations happen in the paint. So you're just going to take your straw here and blow on that wet paint. So I'm starting at the bottom and blowing the air up toward the top so that it gives you that kind of flame, almost lava look. Okay, so I, on both of these, have gone through with the straw and blown on that paint to kind of move it around, get those cool cells to develop those areas of separation in the color. And it, it really does, it looks like flames, which I think is a lot of fun, but also you can see a little bit of a mess. It, oozed over on this edge a little, which is why it's good that we have our piece of scrap wood. I'm going to kind of pile up and throw away my garbage. And this is going to have to dry for a while. Depending on how humid it is outside, it might take as long as two days for this to dry. As it's drying, you'll see it go from shiny to matte. And once it's all totally flat and you don't see any of that shininess anymore, then it's dry, then you can touch it. I was super tempted with mine the other day to, you know, it had been drying for like a day and it looked like it was starting to get kind of dull. And so I touched part of it and it was definitely still wet under there. So you just have to remember this is fairly thick paint and you know, good things come to those who wait. You'll just have to let it sit for a couple of days until it totally dries. And depending on how thick you laid that paint on, it can take a while, but you can leave it right on this piece of wood or your baking sheet. Hopefully now you can pick it up and move it if you need to. And there you have it, some fun with paint pouring and hopefully you had a great time doing it and it looks like flames for you. All right, thanks you guys, have fun. And we would love to see your pictures, send us pictures of what you've done. Uh, you can share it on our Instagram or on our Facebook VIP group. We'd love to see what you're making.